So this is the physics tank, and the physics tank is moving around in a circle. What do you notice? Why can I do this? And why are these bikers not completely crazy? Well, actually, they are pretty crazy to do that. Let me rephrase that question. Why are they still alive? Hello, and welcome to Flip Physics. Today we're going to talk about circular motion. What is it that keeps satellites in orbit, the world spinning around, and this water from spilling all over me? The answer is centripetal force, or centripetal force if you brought up where I was. Imagine you're the passenger seat of a car, when suddenly the car turns sharply. In that moment, what forces do you feel? Where are you pushed? Take a moment to think about it. If you're like most people, you probably said you feel a push towards the outside of the curve. That force is sometimes called the centrifugal force, or centrifugal force. But here's the thing. Is there actually anything pulling you outwards? In physics, if you can't actually name a force, if you can't say where it comes from, what's causing it, it probably doesn't exist. Just like a ball rolling down a slope, there isn't a force down the slope that we can actually name. Gravity is a real force that acts straight down and that also causes it to roll down the slope. And similarly, if we can't name this centrifugal force as something real, something tangible, something concrete, specific, it probably doesn't exist. So why do you feel a push to the outside of the curve? Well, that's because of Newton's first law that says an object in motion remains in motion, an object at rest remains at rest, unless the forces become unbalanced. If the car's going at 50 miles an hour before it takes this sudden curve, the car turns, but your body is still trying to go 50 miles an hour in a straight line. The car goes this way, your body keeps trying to go forward, and the result of that is that you feel a pressure against the outward side of the car. But where do you actually move in the end? you move in a circle with the car. So what's really happening is that the car is applying a force to you to pull you into a circle instead of going straight forward. That's through a combination of friction and normal forces between you and the side of the car. So there's a force pulling you towards the center of the circle, forcing you to move in a circle. This force is what we call the centripetal or centripetal force. Think about it this way. Can a string push? The physics tank is moving in a circle. A string can't push. So all that can be happening with the string is that the string is pulling it towards the center of the circle. So in this situation, the centripetal force is the force of tension in the string. It's not possible for the string to push out. So the centrifugal or centrifugal force that people talk about feeling is really a fictitious force. It's a pretend or fake force. Now this concept is even harder to think about with the bikers because it seems like there has to be something pushing them out because wouldn't they just fall under gravity? But there really isn't. They just move fast enough around the circle that they never quite fall. If they just stopped at the top, they would fall under gravity. It's like the video we watched on Freefall. Astronauts are falling around the Earth as they orbit. They're moving sideways and the force of gravity is pulling them down. They fall, but they never actually get any closer to the Earth because of the curvature of the Earth. By the time they've fallen a little bit, they've moved to the side. The curve of the Earth stops them from getting any closer to it. But still, there's clearly no force pushing them outwards. There's just this force of gravity pulling them inwards. I have a quick demo for you. I have here a cup of water. Don't believe me? See? Water. I'm going to put it on a platform connected to some strings. And then I'm going to do this. Why can I do this? Why does this work? Why am I not about to have a water explosion on my carpet? Why does the water not fall? Well, the water actually wants to fall. It's trying to fall but I'm moving it fast enough that it never gets the chance. It starts to fall down, but by the time it's done that, it's already over at an angle. I'm moving it fast enough that it never quite gets closer to the center. Stopping it is the hardest part. There we go. Still water. See? We could draw a force diagram of the cup at different points in the circle, and it would look like this. For the cup, the centripetal force is not the string, as you might expect. It's actually the normal force of the plastic platform. And then there's gravity, which always acts straight down. 
The string is not acting on the cup. The string is acting on the plastic platform that the cup is sat on. If we drew a force diagram for the platform instead of the cup, it would look really similar to the cup, but instead of a normal force, this time it really would be the tension in the string. Which brings up an important point. Never label FC for centripetal force on a free body force diagram. Never. Always be specific. In a particular situation, is the centripetal force gravity, tension, a normal force? What is it in that situation? And label it FN or FT or FG. Not FC for centripetal force. That's too vague. It should be something real and specific. Otherwise, you can get yourself into the trap of labeling a force that doesn't really exist. Two quick equations to finish. How to calculate centripetal force and how to calculate centripetal acceleration. Centripetal force we can calculate from this equation, where m is the mass of the object that's undergoing circular motion, v is the velocity of the object, and r is the radius of the circle. Centripetal acceleration might be a harder concept, but notice how these forces can't possibly be balanced. The forces are very often pointing in the same or similar direction. There's nothing to balance it. So even if you have an object moving in a circle at a constant speed, it is accelerating because there is a net force. The way you square that circle get it? Square that circle. It's to understand that velocity is a vector quantity. So yes, speed isn't changing, but the velocity is because the direction the object's moving is constantly changing. From this way, to this way, to this way. So velocity, which is a vector that has direction, is changing, which means there is an acceleration. And that acceleration is pointed towards the center of the circle. We can calculate that centripetal acceleration using this equation where v is again the velocity of the object, and r is the radius of the circle. Be sure you never miss out the squared part. For a great video on circular motion by the awesome Hank Green, click this link. So that's circular motion. Make sure you fully understand it, and be sure to ask questions if you don't. Because circular motion, quite literally, makes the world go round. Thanks for watching Flip Physics. Please comment below with your questions, thoughts, and suggestions. You can also like the video and subscribe, or go to the Flip Physics website, flipphysics.net. Until next time, keep questioning. I cannot believe my eyes.